Riley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Monday, October 28th. So we have the moon in Virgo all day, but at 11.55 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that moon in Virgo is going to go void, of course. And we kind of move into early Tuesday morning before we lock into Libra energy, which will take place 30 minutes into the day. And of course, if you listen to the Ascension forecast for this week, you would know that I've already kind of mapped out for us that we're going to be put back on that teeter-totter that we experience through eclipse season, through Libra season, most specifically when the moon moves back into this Libra energy. Of course, we've been in this Virgo energy analyzing and under the sun in Scorpio and Mercury in Scorpio, we're picking things apart. We're breaking things down. We're bringing up old things, old topics, old themes, because we're operating from a new version of self. Therefore, we have a different lens. Therefore, we're operating from a new level of awareness and we're starting to piece together certain dots that were right in front of our face that we couldn't see the connection with. We're starting to piece together those puzzle pieces that, of course, have been coming at us that we've been holding on to but haven't been able to make sense of. So there is going to be a little bit of a throwback, if you will, to eclipse season, to that Libra season that, of course, we were all very happy to get out of just last week when we moved into Scorpio season. A little bit of a throwback, setting us up for this beautiful portal, this beautiful gateway, closing out October and moving into November, which, of course, the Halloween event merges with the new moon in Scorpio which is a whole different level of being able to access information, visions, intuition from the higher realms of intelligence. So we're setting ourselves up for an ending, for a closure, for those scales to finally come into balance where we realize what has to change, what has to transform. So very interesting energy, very interesting transition and of course, an interesting day. So of course, the moon's still in this Virgo energy. We are focused on trying to create organization in our inner realm between our heart and our head. We're trying to analyze, focus in on the problematic areas in order to come up with solutions, improvements, if you will, on how to make things better. So there are 11 different aspects taking place here today. Nine of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in this Virgo energy going to semi-square, create a little bit of tension and conflict with the sun in Scorpio energy. So as beautiful as it is when Virgo and Scorpio energies get along, because of course we're analytical, we're deciphering things, we're reading between the lines, we're putting the pieces together and connecting the dots. When it's a not pleasant aspect, the conflict comes up, meaning There is this want, need, and desire to fix, to heal, to change, to transform, to improve that both Virgo and Scorpio energies have in common. But the moon in our inner realm is still trying to organize our emotions, organize how we're feeling about certain people, places, and things that we know, technically speaking, are coming to an end. The sun shining a very intense light in the Scorpio energy is showing us what we truly desire, reminding us of what it is that we actually want. Because when we're in that intensity and we're thinking about what it is that we want, what we need, what we desire, it helps to put into perspective and it helps to kind of lessen the blow, if you will, with the people, places, and things that we need to close the door upon. And so again, we're being highlighted to where it is that we're going through these growing pains, understanding what it is that we have to do, knowing what it is that we want to pursue, but not necessarily being empowered enough to do those hard things as of yet. Again, once we get past that new moon in Scorpio, totally different playing field. The moon in Virgo energy, then going to make a very harsh interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer, who, of course, is retrograde in Aries energy, helping us to kind of fix, heal, repair the wounds, the pain, the trauma still alive, very much in our faces and still very much in our programming, even though we've adopted this new identity, this higher self. 
And so this particular energy, like we're nitpicking and again, coming out of the sun and the moon kind of, you know, highlighting where we're going through these growing pains, we're really picking ourselves apart. We're beating ourselves up. We're breaking ourselves down. We're comparing where it is that we were six months ago to where it is that we're at now, not understanding that we're totally different people, not understanding that we have grown, we have healed to a certain extent. And so this is like where negative Nancy comes out to play. This is where, again, we kind of have to beat ourselves up, break ourselves down before we're going to kind of get up, dust ourselves off and start building in strengths again. So where the moon in Virgo needs to identify the problems. Well, when you see that the problem is alive and well within you, it's a little bit frustrating to see. It's a little bit aggravating. We're getting on our own damn nerves, but it is part of the process of realizing what parts of us need to die. So the moon goes ahead, gets into the boxing ring, squares off with Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. He's retrograde in Gemini energy. And the one thing that Virgo energy and Gemini energy has in common is, well, two things, I guess. First of all, they're both mutable signs, meaning we're trying to change, we're trying to adjust, we're trying to improve. And the second is that Mercury rules over both of them rules over the earth energy of Virgo and the air energy of Gemini. So normally when Jupiter's being aspected in a good way, he brings the hype, he brings the optimism, he brings the confidence. But of course, getting to the boxing ring, squaring off means that we are fighting it out. And emotionally speaking, the Virgo energy is just so focused on all the things that we're doing wrong, all the things still left to do, all the craziness, all the chaos. Jupiter because we're retrograde, we're looking back, we're reflecting back to old situations, old circumstances, old scenarios, old conversations, old perspectives. And we're seeing where it is that now we know better. Therefore, we have to do better. And so yes, there is a magnification of all that is wrong, all that you know, we're kind of sucking at all that we need to improve on. However, the information, the knowledge on how to do just that already in us. This is what, you know, the Gemini energy is all about, bringing the information and knowledge that we've already accumulated through our tough love life experiences that we've just been failing to put into practice. And so, you know, the Virgo energy that the moon is in, all about the bad habits, all about where our mind is at, what it is that we continue doing, you know, on, let's call it autopilot, that of course continues to strengthen the egoic programming and that in itself needs to change. So at 8.31 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have a beautiful interaction. We need a little bit of help coming out of this, I'm going to say, tough start to the day. We have Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger in this cancer energy, again, water sign, in preservation mode, in defense mode, we're willing to fight, defend, protect what it is that we've already built and created. We have a little bit of a stronger attachment to the past than we actually need at this particular point in time, but that's okay, especially when we're in a transitional period. We definitely double down. We definitely hold on to what is tried, tested, and true. We have Mars trining, which is a beautiful interaction, with Neptune, who of course is retrograde in Pisces energy. Neptune is our dreams and our intuition and our spirituality and our karma and our vision and, you know, our emotional spiritual realm. And so Neptune's been retrograde. So the rose colored glasses are off of our faces. We're we're seeing life as it is, not for the way that we wish it would be. And we would like to run and we would like to hide. But we, of course, cannot do that. We are required to rise up. We are required to do what our higher self needs us to do and just rearrange, restructure our spirituality, our belief system, what it is that we're actually running from and why, where it is that even though we have deep, dark desires, we have deep dark fears preventing us from going after those particular things. So 
this is a trine. This is a beautiful interaction. This is water on water energy. And water, first of all, is very, very cleansing, very healing. And especially coming out of the friction that we just started the day in, this is going to feel like a much lighter vibe. It kind of purifies us, kind of removes the junk, removes the gunk. Then it works on refreshing, restoring, renewing our soul and our spirit and our creativity. And it jacks up our intuition and it jacks up our inner sense of knowing. And we just come to some beautiful conclusions. First of all, this is going to open us up to start thinking about some alternatives. Okay, so it's a beautiful juncture that we're at. We're getting closer to the end of this cancer energy that Mars is in because of course he will be shifting into Leo energy early November. It's been a long time holding on to the past. We're in these final degrees of cancer energy where it is kind of the time to let the past go, to open up, to even thinking about the future and what it is that we could be doing differently. So this is where the alternatives come into play. This is where we're kind of experimenting with an inner vision, Neptune energy, on what it would be like to take one path over the other and vice versa and compare the good, the bad, the ugly. This is a time where we're going to feel hella inspired, hella motivated. We're letting go, let's call it anger, but realistically, it's the rigid rigidity, the state of paralysis of anger that we've been in. We've been in a holding pattern. We've been just so frustrated and so confused and so unsure of what it is to do that that anger has just been kind of, you know, cultivating this state of paralysis. Now we get to let go of that and replace it with inspiration with motivation, with determination, which is a much better form of the anger and frustration that we've been sitting in. So this is going to help us just cool down just a tad, take that, you know, let's call it sharp anger, just round those edges off and actually use it for us instead of having it used against us. We could come up with creative solutions. We could see actual physical moves being offered to us to move on to move forward, especially in closing the door on particular topics and themes of the past. This is an energy and this is kind of like an oxymoronic thing because Mars just wants to charge forward. Neptune just wants us to slow down. And so there is this inner balance that we have to come to that we have to find so that we're cultivating the inspiration, the fire needed and we're refining the vision, the clarity that we actually need on our dream and vision so that we know exactly what to do to execute this path plan and strategy. And we're just kind of trying to get in alignment. Again, the major change of Scorpio season is the change to our soul and our spirit. Once that happens in our inner realm, we can take action and make moves to rearrange, restructure our physical realms to start mirroring back to us what it is that we've already arrived at. So it's at this particular point that we're kind of hyping ourselves up. We truly believe that as long as we can have a vision, back it up with the appropriate emotion, have the appropriate plan and strategy put into place, we can actually manif manifest this. And of course, that is the manifesting equation. And if you want to know more about that, there's an elemental energy course over on my Patreon that as a patron, you can have access to to help you understand your elemental energy profile and the equation needed in order to actually manifest. So this is a huge green light go ahead in finding the path, the clarity, the direction that we want to take as far as kind of piecing together where it is that we would like to go from here. So a lot is coming out of this particular interaction. The moon in Virgo, shortly thereafter, going to sextile, beautiful interaction with Mercury. So our heart and our head coming online, our heart and our head seeing the finer, finer details needed in order to bring this plan, this strategy, this dream, this vision to life. And, you know, the moon in Virgo focusing in on the smaller, minute details, the Scorpio energy, seeing how the interconnectedness of all of the things that need to kind of fall, the dominoes that need to fall in what order, how we're going to initiate this, how we're going to, again, stay focused to actually see this transition through and hopefully where it is that we're going to end up on the other side of this major transition in life. So we're definitely piecing things together. We're feeding off of that Mars and Neptune trine and having our heart and our head get in alignment, get in agreement, understanding, you know, the plan, the mission here, huge, huge sense of clarity. Now, as you know, 
just when things are getting good, we can't stay on that path for too long. The dark egoic programming gonna try and pull us back into the funk. Starting with Venus, Venus being the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's in the Sagittarius energy, a little bit more free spirited, open, adventurous, willing to try different things in order to create happiness, joy, safety, security, stability in her day to day life. Venus, she's getting into the boxing ring. Who she's fighting? Saturn. Saturn is the Lord of Karma. He is retrograde in Pisces energy. He will be going direct here early November, but he is not direct yet. This has been an inner realization of where it is that we need to boss up, rebuild, restructure our belief system, rebuild, restructure our sense of worth. And because this has everything to do with the change of heart that we're going through and therefore the change of the path in which we want to be walking because of the change of the dream goal and vision that we now want to pursue. So Venus and Saturn coming into a square is going to highlight where we're going through major growing pains, especially in that heart space. Here's the thing. Saturn kind of brings a little bit of a pumping of the brakes, so to speak, like a little bit of a restriction, if you will. And so we kind of feel like we aren't giving our fullest to the people around us, if you will, especially where Venus is very connected to relationships. And so we're feeling a little bit withdrawn, a little bit held back, even though we just had this beautiful realization, this little amount of clarity that is helping us piece together what we have to do and pursue to take kind of care of being the creator of our futuristic situations and circumstances, even though that feels good. Just when we start feeling good, we start getting discouraged. We are not feeling when we are present in the here and now that the dream that we just got downloaded with the inspiration, the motivation that we just felt, we don't feel it in the present moment. What we feel in the present moment is the weight of the world that we once wanted, that we once created, that we're currently living in, that we have no want, need, and desire to continue to live in, we feel the weight of the world weighing on our shoulders. And that, in particular, gives us a very, very dark, heavy energy where it's almost like we are gaining the worst reality check on what actually has to be done in order to set ourselves free to pursue this new path, this new vision, this new goal, this new dream. So it's almost like we start slipping into the negative Nancy narrative. It's almost like we are realizing that, you know, the want, need and desire, the craving to make change, the craving to be living in our futuristic reality. Well, it's pretty strong, but it's not as strong as the fear, the doubt, the insecurity rising up within us, the weight of the world, again, weighing heavily on our chests. And so we're kind of having a little bit of difficulty understanding where it is that we're going to dig deep and find this boldness, this bravery, this courage to do all the hard things that we're realizing right now. Technically speaking, we don't want to do. Side note, we will gain that boldness, bravery, and courage once Mars moves into Leo energy again early November. So we're hella sensitive and we're not really feeling good about the fact that we are the creator of our own destiny because right now we don't feel strong enough to do what needs to be done. Here's the thing. The sun in Scorpio energy is then going to make an awkward interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, who of course is still retrograde in the Gemini energy. So now we're realizing, guess what? We want so much more from our lives than we're currently getting. Oh my goodness, we realize that we want this dream, this new vision so badly. We understand what needs to be done. We understand that we're not really empowered right now to do all of those hard things. But man, do we ever want change. We desperately want more than what it is that we're currently getting. Here's the thing. Jupiter magnifies and he over exaggerates. And the thing about it is, is that the sun, of course, in Scorpio energy showing us damn well where change and transformation needs to take place because we have new desires that we want to bring online. The Gemini energy that Jupiter is currently retrograde in has us divided Again, one foot in the present moment attached to the past choices that we've made in order to create this present moment, and one foot in the present moment thinking about the futuristic vision, goal, and dream that now we want so desperately that we're having a little bit of an anxiety attack thinking about all that needs to be done before we're actually going to be living in it. 
And so this is the point in time where, again, whatever state of being we were in, thus Venus and Saturn highlighting where it is that we were feeling that pressure, we suddenly get that state magnified. That's not going to feel good. That's going to turn the volume all the way up on us feeling blocked and challenged and us feeling negative and us feeling like we don't know if we have what it takes in order to achieve this new reality, this new vision that we're currently starting to piece together. So again, it's an over-exaggerated emotion, but it is an emotion nonetheless, and it can make us feel very trapped in our lives, very much like our back is against a wall. Side note, that's what we need to feel in Scorpio season in order to get out of our own damn way. We have the moon in Virgo trining, beautiful interaction, with Uranus, the Great Awakener, who is retrograde in Taurus energy. Love, love, love this, especially taking place right after this like profound darkness and weight takes over us because Uranus gives us a lightning bolt of perspective, has us seeing the other side of the coin, has us seeing solutions where, you know, up until this point, we were just banging our head against a wall. Here's the thing, Uranus being retrograde in Taurus energy is kind of showing us where it is that we're holding on to the old, to the attachments, to the people, places, and things that the old version of self had built that we're no longer resonating with. The moon and Virgo energy analyzing, why are we doing this? Why are we holding on to dead weight? Why are we choosing to stay in a state of paralysis that we've been praying for an escape from? Why are we not doing anything about it? Why are we resisting these changes? This is a trine between earth energies. This means that suddenly in our physical realm, we're seeing the way out. We're seeing an option and an alternative that we didn't see before. And once you know, you can't unknow it because it nags at you until you try it. And this is a beautiful thing. The moon is then going to sit across from directly oppose Neptune. So of course, you know, this is going to take the wind out of the sails that we just kind of received from the moon trining Uranus, whatever the moon is sitting across from Neptune, the Pisces and Virgo energy still highlighting the axis of healing. We have to heal our physical realm and our mental health, and we have to heal our emotions and our spiritual self. And Neptune wants to bring a level of confusion, a level of delusion, a level of escapism. And of course, the Virgo energy needs us to be so freaking present that there's no way in hell we could float away. We have to deal with life as it is, not for the way that we wished it would be. So emotionally speaking, we're overwhelmed, we're confused, we want to run, we want to hide, but what are we going to do? We're going to strike a balance. We're not going to run, we're not going to hide, but we're also not going to feel as suffocated as we felt earlier in the day under the choices of our past selves. Emotionally speaking, we are going to feel that intensity of where the problematic areas are and Today, we should have definitely been realizing that just in time for the moon in Virgo energy to sextile beautiful interaction with Mars, the god of war in this cancer energy. This is us feeling hell bent damn well and determined that we are going to focus in on what needs to be done. Focus in on what we have to let go of, what we have to detach from. Focus in on what we truly desire, because that is going to remind us what we're actually fighting for. So emotionally speaking, we're hyped up, we're determined, we're motivated, we got tunnel vision goggles on, we're kind of listening to our heart space and our head space, and we're understanding what we could take action upon to not only clear the space for some progress in a new direction to be made, but clear the junk and gunk out from the remnants, the debris of the past. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Virgo energy, trining beautiful interaction with Pluto, the great transformer at 29 degrees in Capricorn energy. This is the exact time that the moon is going to be at 29 degrees in Virgo energy. This is the last aspect that the moon is going to be making before going void, of course. 
and what a beautiful one. You've heard me say it before. I will say it again. We love Virgo energy and Pluto working together because Pluto does a deep dive in our psyche to unearth the seeds of the egoic programming, the limiting belief system that got planted in our beautiful little brains up until the age of seven. That is when the unconscious belief system was full and complete. And we've been operating on that particular system, those choices, those decisions, our whole entire life lives. Pluto is unearthing those seeds, the Virgo energy that rules over the lower level intellect, the part of our mind space that connects to our ego selves in order to rewrite the programming. Overwrite it, overwrite it. Fill it in with something better. We can recognize where it is that the dark parts of our belief system of our mental plane. We know where those dark parts are every single time that we lose ourselves to the fears, the doubts, the insecurities, the shoulda, coulda, woulda's, the is and and buts. That's the ego programming. Try to prevent us from growing, trying to prevent us from changing. The ego programming wants us to stay the same. And so the moon and Virgo trining beautiful interaction with this Pluto energy at the 29 critical crisis degree of Capricorn energy, we're about to move mountains, starting in our mental plane, then in our emotional plane, and then in our physical realm. Again, 11.55 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon goes void, of course, and we lock into Libra energy 30 minutes into the day on Tuesday.